Hello, welcome to another video. Yes, I am talking on this one, so don't worry. Uh, <laughs> for all you chatter fans. I'm out in woods to get a bit of woodland time and I'm keeping it super simple, just a tarp, tarp on floor, ground sheet. I've just put this tarp in a plough formation up around a tree, pegged it out. It's three stakes that I've just knocked up out of wood, tied off the tree. My foam roll mat, sleeping bag, <laughs> that's it. Should we go through it while you're here? What we got? Rab, Neutrino 600, which is sort of a free season bag, but we're not in the depths of winter now, so I get away with a free season bag most of the time because uh, I've got my army softies and merino wool layers, so I just layer up, get in there, I'll be fine. It's raining. It's sort of spitting at the moment, but it's forecast a lot more rain, so hopefully we should be nice and dry. This will shed the rain perfectly. If needs be, I can put a stick up here just to give it more headroom, but uh, what I've done is I've tied a stick around, a, around some paracord and launched it up further than I can reach, which gives me quite a lot of height. And it's the perfect shelter. There's absolutely loads of room in here. Look. <laughs> Look. You can swing a bat or whatever they say. Tickle a ferret. Do what you want. Do what you want. Do what you want with what you want in here. It's pretty nice. And this is my digs. I'm gonna have a small contained fire just in front of it. Nothing too rambunctious, because obviously I don't want to set fire to my tarp. And we're close to a few trees as well, so I'll just bring it away from the trees. Dig a nice fire pit and we'll just have a contained fire. I plan on doing a nice winter stew with a couple of little treats in there. Knackered man, I tell you what, the sound of the, even just that little pitter patter on the tarp is very relaxing. So I'm hoping it, uh, I'm hoping it rains a little bit more actually later on. We're in the UK, it rains all the time, doesn't it so? There's no point in waiting for a a day when it's not raining, just get out, make best of it, and that's what I'm doing. I don't have much daylight left, so I'm probably going to just get the fire prep now. You're under tarp, mate, in rain. Out at rain, sorry. You alright in there, mate? Are you good? <laughs> Look at you. Eh? Living it up in there, aren't you? So you're under tarp now, away from rain. I'm out in rain. Can't help but feeling I've got short straw, but I'll take one for the team. Because if we don't get this fire going, we can't eat. Right, have it close to. Right, without making it too many. Right, I don't want to get smoked out. So, out there, look. And you, it's, it's a big layer of pine. So it's going to take some digging down, in fact, that might be too soft, it's alright. A good couple of inches until I'm down to this loamy stuff. So I'm going to clear a good area so as not to and get rid of all the roots. I mean it's raining and it's forecast rain all day tomorrow so I aren't too fussed, but it's still best to be on the safe side and just clear away everything that could catch. Because I don't want it travelling under my bed either. And I've got plenty of water with me, so I can um, douse it in the morning as well. Yeah, worth spending a bit of time on this actually, because it is... There's a decent layer. And there you go, look, that's down to the the bare earth there so nothing can nothing can set fire or smolder overnight bit of a root in there soon shiv that off there you go and we get all this stuff that's been suspended off the floor so it's nice and dry that can be our kindling done my old faith I had this for years just a little pouch, I don't know what was even in it. What was even in it? Oh, a liner for a, uh, a sleeping bag liner, I believe. Right, we're gonna do 
flint and steel for this one. Very simple. And we've got some char cloth, which is, I've said it so many times, it's just some 100% cotton. Uh, you pop in a tin, make sure there's an air hole in it somewhere, whether it's the hinges or whether you put a hole in it yourself. Pop it on a fire till smoke stops coming out the hole or hinges and then there you go, Bob's your turnip. You've got char cloth if you want it. I've got some grass, it's super dry. And we'll make a little divot in it. Rough that divot up a bit. That's where my ember will go. There. You see it? Now that will go into my bundle of joy. Don't wrap it too tight. Air is your friend. One more. Lying. There we go. Let's fire. with these little bits I've got me 12 I think it's the 12 centimeter billy can perfect for one person you could even do two people with this and I'm just going to do a classic stew. Not going to brown the meat off or do anything fancy. All in, lid on, bosh. Not even going to peel my carrots, just take the end off. And uh, I can quite chunky. I'm going to cook it for a long time so they'll hold up, won't go to mush. Carrot. A snip. I think I'll take this boy lengthways and then roughly chopped in with the snip. Whatever you want to call it, mate. I'm not, I'm not bothered. Call it what you want. Snip. You know, is it a swede? Is it a turnip? Is it whatever, mate? It doesn't matter, does it? If you grew up calling it candy floss, then it's on you, mate. You do you. I don't care. Turnip, little onion, skins off, a bit more chunky carrot, I think, a bit of beef there with fat on. And now I'm going to just take a bit of that fat off, I don't need it all, but I will have a little bit just for flavour, a little bit of the fat in there. I don't want too much, get rid of that. We'll see about having some big old bits of this. It's going to be slow cooked anyway, so it'll all be as tender as you like. So I want big chunky bits. Oh, it's raining, man. I've lost my light. It's just got dark, so I'm having to do it by torch while keeping out at rain. <laughs> Hard work, but it'd be worth it. Just smash up some garlic. Major bits of skin can come off, but it'll all... It's all edible, innit? I'm going to kill you. Now, normally... I would fry off the meat at first with a little bit of seasoned flour. I'm just going to roll it in there like Turkish Delight. It shall season it and also it'll thicken it up. It'll thicken the stew up as well. A few sprigs of thyme. I'll just put them in on the stalk so I can remove them after. And put a bit in. Not that much. I do. On top. I've got a sea salt and pepper mix. Just to... A bit of seasoning in there. 
the Pierre, it's the Resistance. A Northern Monk, it's a John Peeler, BTW. Come on. Final one, Tom Joy. Shout out my boy Tom Joy, photographer. Good lad. He was he uh, came to the top of Ben Nevis with us. And that's his final page one. He's been there from the beginning, so big up you, mate. And it is uh, coming in at a whopping 13.3%. It's a Speyside Imperial Stout, barrel aged. And that will, I mean, it's probably a bit of a sin putting it in a stew, in it? But, oh, that's my, woo. That put hairs on your hairs. In there we go with that, look. Get in there for paw. Full can, because whatever. That's how we live in. Full can. Full send. Bit of water. Just to bring it to the top. Onto the fire with it. The handle stays up because of these metal clips which I added, I made them myself. I'll leave a link to the video there if you want to know how to make them cheap and easy to do. Should have brought another beer, shouldn't I? There's one in pan. <laughs> That's it. Tea's on. I'll give that hour and a half to two hours. Just simmering on fire. The rain keeps coming and going. It's here at the moment. I don't know if you can hear it. Just like a drizzle on the tarp. It's quite nice. I'm going to be serving my stew in a giant Yorkshire pudding. Because I'm back up north. I've been down south quite a bit of late. So I've been struggling to make videos and that because I've got some some uh, some life stuff going on. But I'm back up north for a little bit, so I thought I'd get out into the woods and bring myself a giant Yorkshire pudding because Yorkshire. And that's why. So I'm going to serve my stew and my giant Yorkshire pudding <laughs> and yam it, and then just chill out in here, mate. There's loads of space in here, and it's shedding the rain perfectly. It's a lovely setup, and it affords me this wonderful view of the woods. It's so open, you can smell the stew wafting, and it smells delightful. Oh, can you hear it rain? The crackle of the fire and the rain on the tarp, man. That's it, isn't it? Soothing, soothing. Got my little hurricane lantern. Obviously, I've got my torch on and uh, while I'm doing like little bits to camera and stuff, but when you're not on, it's just that just gives a lovely glow inside the shelter. Uh, it's perfect for me, it's all I need. Got enough wood prepped that'll probably cook me stew and just keep me warm. It's forecast rain all night and tomorrow, so we'll see, we'll see how we get on. It is delightful. The fire's got enough residual heat to deal with this rain. And I'm under this canopy, so not a lot of it's getting through. It's just creating a really nice atmosphere on the tar. It's making me tired. Maybe 10 more minutes, and then I'll, uh, I'll get stuck into it. Yeah, I know, it's cheating. I've not cooked it out here, but whatever, mate. Whatever. Oh, it's warm through there. So I'm just going to warm it through on top of the billy can, making sure it doesn't burn. Because that would be tragic. Look at that. <laughs> uh, it's good to be alive, isn't it? It's good to be alive when you put out. Oh, it's already crisping up nice. Look at that. Hear it? 
<laughs> it's crispy. Yorkshire. My plate's a bit too small, isn't it? Or is it just perfect? It's perfect. If it's perfect in there, look. Happy days. Right, let's get the stew off. Oh, that smells so good. <laughs> yes. So we can have away with the bits of... So all the leaves have come off. At the time you just left with the stalks, get rid. Look at that beef, look. Unctuous. Carrot. Parsnip. Oh, let's just get it on. Get it on. I say it a lot because um, I cook a lot outdoors and stuff, but... The smell on this is insane, mate. Right, there we go, look at that. And then we'll put some of the gravy over it. God, I can't wait. Tell me, that doesn't look delicious. Because it does. Right, ow, ow, cramp, crow. Peter Crouch. <sighs> Gives me knife. OM genius this is. Oh, raw beef on it. That's alright. We'll put it over the fire. Sterilise it over the fire a little bit. Be right. That's it. This light is kicking my face off. Well, please don't drop it is all I'm saying. Here we go. I've been waiting for this for ages. Look at that. Are you... Come on, focus face. It doesn't matter about me. Get that din-dins in there. Look! <laughs> you having it? Steak and ale stew in a giant Yorkshire pudding. <coughs> Making me mouth water. I'll be honest, I've only got a spoon, but... I'm only going to need a spoon, I think, because it's all ever so tender. It's going to be hot, isn't it? It's going to be hot, but... Hey, it's focused, look, what the... Look at that, man. It's going to be hot. Carrot. <laughs> I've said it before and I'll say it again. Don't sleep on the on the carrot when it comes to stews. Turnip slash swede. Melting. Onion. Just melting. Let's have a bit of this meat. Get my grill out at red. It's so tender. Mmm. <laughs> Much. Just pull it apart. Oh my word! Show a bit of pud. Pud. Crispy. <laughs> Welcome to Yorkshire. I'm just cutting this meat with a spoon, that's what I'll... Look at that. Yorkshire pud with meat on. No. No, this is legit one of the best meals I've had outside. And I say it a lot, and I've had a lot of stews outside, but there's something about this one. Mmm. Whole cloves of garlic in there. It might be down to the can of Northern Monk that's giving it that sort of sweetness. It's a 13% ale, once all the alcohol's burnt off, is a pretty sweet affair. I need to just enjoy this by fire. Do you want to see me? I oh, can't be. Can't be janked. Look. <laughs> well, there you go. What more do you need? Absolute scenes. I just want to say ah, thanks to everyone who's voted for me in the uh, 
great outdoors magazine um reader's choice filmmaker of the year award if you haven't already and you'd be so kind you can go and vote for me i'll leave a link below it's uh it's on there or vote for someone else if you think they deserve it just vote for someone it seems like a pretty cool award because it's the people's choice if i could bribe you with one of these man I'd, that would be a no-brainer wouldn't it i'd be in <laughs> right i'm gonna enjoy this and i'm probably gonna enjoy it rest out at pan because it's delicious and then just sit and just ogle me fire turn this off because this light's pickling my bulb i just want to be by the light of the fire enjoying this delightful meal Yes! Ed shouldn't catch fire, it's just, it's on its way out, I haven't put any more wood on it, there's only a couple of bits that'll just die down, and then when I turn you off it'll be a nice little crackler, oh lantern, I'll turn lantern deck off as well, <sighs> but for now, <sighs> so warm man, I've got me uh, army softies on just and then i've got merino base layer a t-shirt my hoodie hat a pair of wool socks hmm. belly full of stew i'm gonna fall asleep and just leave the camera running aren't i just big time lapse of me just farting my way through the night <laughs> tired mate i can't reach you can't be bothered. Uh, it's been a good one. Not been doing that much chatting, but it's been night. Nice. That that stew was unreal, unfathomably unreal. Right, <sighs> I'm off. Unless something magic or tragic happens, I shall see you on the morrow. we are. You can't see very well. <laughs> Hello. Put that on there. Morning. Good morning. The light's starting to come through. I'll be back. <laughs> Can you see me? Oh, it's a bit dark in it. Get you out here. There's the shelter. It's colder than I expected it to be. I didn't have my airbed, I just thought, oh, I'm gonna go super simple, I'll just shoot for foam mat. So, obviously, you lose a lot of heat through the ground, and I think that's what happened, so. <clears throat> it was sucking the heat out of me. Oh. And then the old digits start hurting when I'm out in cold, so. It was, <laughs> it was a cold one last night. The idea of that swimming so appealing now. Probably not gonna go, because my, it jumped too cold. <laughs> too cold, mate. There's no point in pushing it just for you, lot, is there? You know, you've got to do it when you want to do it. Yeah, pissing it down. It was absolutely pissing it down. It was lovely. Completely dry. There was no, there was no like, there was nothing running into the tarp. All my tarp up floor's dry. There's so much air going in because of the, what? like, look at the size of that. It's pretty big. So much air going in, there's no condensation. Wonderful shelter. Right, let's get this fire squared away. Oh, that's good. There's nothing heat, there's no heat there at all, so that's just a soup bowl. I took enough earth off that I can just Fill that back in. Because I had enough water as well. I brought some extra water out with me just because <clears throat> I knew I was going to be in a pine forest and I just wanted to douse it and there's no water source around here, so it's it's pretty much as simple as that. Quick and easy. 
No trace left. <laughs> also, my pillar's got, it's punctured, so <clears throat> I kept going down, kept having to blow it up. I'll have to get the old puncture repair kit back on it. I've done a couple of re repairs on it already, but hopefully it's not the valve. If it's the valve, then it's shot to shit in it, but hopefully not. That's my mat. Oh, it says no light on here, is there? What can I do? Sorry. Yeah, it's just an ultra light. It is billed as a hiking sleep pad. I, I, I normally use it, well, I had a like a, an orange coloured one that I used all the time, it was all beaten up, but I lost it when uh, me and Fern did the Cumbria Way, just sort of, I finished the Cumbria Way, looked at my bag, I was like, oh, my orange thing's up there, so, <laughs> felt quite bad about, I don't know where it is, but it's gone. So I got this, the black one, and they're great just for putting under your, under your uh, sleep mat, or just carrying with you as a sit pad, but, as an actual lying on it pad, it, they're, uh, you don't, you're not gonna, it's not a winter thing, I'll tell you that. I was relatively comfy because the, the pines are quite deep here, so the ground's comfortable. It's just the, um, it just sucks all the heat out of you, that's all. Which is something I know. I've been caught out by it before, but I've been caught out by it again. <laughs> we live and we don't learn, you know? That's all it is. Must have had a good five or six hours kip. That's not good, but I'll tell you what, I'll take it. I'll take it. Simple. For those wondering, the tarp is a Solognac. It's, it's a Decathlon's own brand of outdoor wear. So just nice, cheap and cheerful. It's sturdy, it's not the lightest ever, but it seems sturdy. It's the first time I've had it out. I've had it for a while. It's the first time I've had it out. It's decent. I like it. Oh, these are see-through, new patches and stickers. So they're, uh, they're waterproof and see-through, as you can see, so you can just pop it on your, on your mirror or on your car window or whatever, they look quite good. I've got one on my, on my van. They're out now if, you, if you're interested. Uh, link below. <laughs> Let's take this off. This never normally happens, but taking that home with me all, I've got to keep it in this bag and keep it upright because it's my stew. Couldn't, <laughs> little lantern, <laughs> lantern and stew, I'm off, I'm off to work. See ya. <laughs> nah, imagine that, turning up to the yard like that with lantern and stew. Now lads, morning. I wished. Or turning up to you like, just on tills at Tesco, but you're like that in morning. I've got my uh, slow cooked stew and my lantern. I don't know what I'm on about. Stop this charade now. Because I'll have that. that is, there's enough in there to reload it to have, to have it with dinner. I don't know what I'm talking about. Come on, leave no trace, obviously, as always. As you can see, shall I show you? Do you need to see? Get in, zoomed in, look. There you are. Nothing. It's only eight o'clock. I've got a lot to do today. I don't think I'm gonna go for a swim, you know. No, I'm not. No. Oh, will I? What underpants? Right, it, this fall, this this all depends on what I'm wearing on under here, because I've got, oh no, tr no. I can't, I can't. I've got my thong on, I can't. I'm not going swimming, sorry. I would normally, I'd go in buff, but it's too much editing to, 
you know, put to blur it. So I'll catch you on next one for a wild swim. Right, well, thanks for joining me on this one. I've loved it. It's been just, it's been nice to keep it basic and having the tarp open like that really does let you feel like you're in the woods. I know you're in the woods anyway, but it gives you that, it gives you the views and it? it makes you feel like you're actually part of it, not just enclosed in a tent or under a hammock or whatever. It's a really nice way of camping and having the fire close to the tarp, it was luxury and at times, man, it was just pissing it down. I was dry and the fire was keeping me warm and lighting the inside of the, of the tarp. It was chef's kiss. And speaking of chef's kiss, that stew in the Yorkshire pudding was, how do you do like five? Like five. Chef's kiss. It was delicious. Absolutely delicious. Right, I'm off. I'm off to work. Take care of yourselves. Much love. Oh, I don't do the pee. I did that. Can I cut that? <laughs> Peace, guys. Peace, guys. Take care of yourselves, yeah? Woo! See you later. About it. Did peace. <laughs> oh, it's, it is what it is now, isn't it? I can't, I'm not redoing all that, am I? Oh, I love you all. Bye. <laughs>